Welcome everyone. We're here today to talk about our experience in Southwest Florida, creating an eco alliance made of many groups, many people, our lessons learned and our road and journey. My name is Tammy. I'm Hillary. And I'm Jack. So we will be your presenters for today and let's get started with the presentation. Thank you. Welcome everyone. This presentation will discuss the Southwest Florida Eco Alliance's journey towards collaboration. And thank you, Volo Foundation, for inviting us to speak here today and for hosting the Florida Climate Week. My name is Tammy Renkoski, and we have three speakers today from Citizens Climate Lobby. I will present the why and how we got started. Hillary Cobran, MD, will present our path towards collaboration. And Jack Ebinger, Esquire, will present our end objective and lessons learned. So let's get started. First, a little bit about me. I'm a certified industrial hygienist and I specialize in occupational health and safety. And a lot of people, when they hear certified industrial hygienist, they think, hmm, does she clean teeth in factories? No, um, it's all about protecting workers in various uh, occupations if their health and safety. And for about 32 years, I worked uh, primarily for large global environmental engineering firms. And I'm now retired and I've decided to focus my retirement on the climate crisis and microplastics. And I did this because I became alarmed after watching Before the Flood with Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio and Chasing Ice, which is a photographic documentary um, of the melting glaciers. I'm the co-leader of the Citizens Climate Lobby Florida Collier Lee chapter uh, with Jack Eubinger. So, in January of 23, we were just coming out of COVID, so people were um, happy to be getting out of their houses, but still things had changed. So, and watching the news was very depressing, and we were in a very challenging, difficult little political atmosphere. So, Aria Hoover with the Climate Reality Project, my friend said, you know, we've just got to do something just to have fun. So, we brainstormed ideas and decided on a post-holiday potluck at my cl community's clubhouse. It ended up as a true group planning effort and a success to the key volunteers. And the potluck started out as a joint venture between CCL and Climate Reality, but we decided to expand it to invite friends from other climate, sustainability, conservancy, and environmental groups. And everyone brought great food. We had tons of food, it was amazing. And Bob Moore with Climate Reality, he also, he created a Climate Jeopardy game, thanks to Gene Chandler from Shell Point, and for the first time, many of us met in person. We've been used to meeting on Zoom all the time, but we'd never been in person. So that was, so it was a great opportunity to actually meet people. So we had planned to have a meeting to discuss collaboration efforts and ideas, but there was so much energy, passion, and networking going on that we never made it to the meeting and decided to just um, call it a great, great, um, great event. But something magical happened that night. We felt connected, engaged, and motivated. And so several months later, Linda Seacrest with Reset and Nora Demers with FGCU set a second and then a third potluck at my community clubhouse. These were held in November of 23 and January of 24. More and more people came from more and more organizations. And we finally made time to do formal introductions and talk future collaborations. Everyone was excited. We weren't alone. And we recharged our batteries by connecting with each other to continue our work. And we didn't want to lose momentum over this past summer with the snowbirds gone and people fortunately stepped up. Thanks to Bet Pat Duncan with CCL and the Shell Point Green Team, she organized a Wolftop Wednesday. And you can see the photo of some of the folks there um, at a new uh, venue in Riverside in Bonita Springs. And Wolftop, they called it because people were invited to bring their dogs. So people had a great happy hour that day. And again, thanks to Ann Smith with the Green Tent Circle she organized a summer salsa celebration at Bonita Beach. We have lots of ideas for get-togethers when the snowbirds re return, and that time is coming soon. So through this, we realized we, we can and want to accomplish more together than we can alone. We shared a common vision to accelerate efforts to achieve more effective impacts in our work versus the current too much talking, too few volunteers, and too little outcome. Part of the key was that CCL was willing to host the group getting started, and we invited others to our meetings and to keep things moving. We realized we needed a better way to communicate and collaborate, 
emails just wouldn't cut it. Hillary then picked up the ball and started moving us forward. So I will now turn it over to Hillary to talk about the details of our path towards collaboration. Thank you so much for your time. Hillary. Thank you, Tammy. And hi, everybody. I'm Hillary Cobrin. I'm a physician. I'm a medical, uh, retired medical director and a clinical medical professor. And one of the coordinators here for our Southwest Florida Eco Alliance. And it's eco as in ecology, economy, a lot of great words, uh, not echo, um, which happens to be the name of one of the groups in our alliance, fantastic organization you should check out. So I've, I've had a long and keen interest in community organization, and I found lots of valuable learning and multiple and some unexpected places, uh, medical academia, for example, um, and also um, the business world. The, uh, turns out a, a mini MBA is, is uh, fascinating and very, very valuable. Also international world um, nonprofits, uh, including uh, Florida Clinician for Climate Action. I hope you know that organization, um, Pachamama and Eco America. So I realized I needed to change. I needed to evolve from learning which I love to do, to doing, which is much harder, um, and from going from passive to active. And I wanna share that the wonderful group here in Southwest Florida has made it easy to try to do that. So here is an evolving list of uh, the group that we are growing to be and hope to grow further. Um, we're multi-stakeholders is one of the expressions we use it. And we've taken a big step to try to improve our collaboration um, among the regional organizations. So we were ready to become a group of groups. And so what did we do next? Um, we, we tried to define what our intention was. So again, we're not one thing, we're many. Each group continu continues with our primary focus, but together we're trying to figure out better ways to collaborate and coordinate. Um, basically, all of us want hyper-local, measurable, achievable, effective actions. So our, our uh, always uh, evolving intent right now is we are members of environmental, sustainability, conservation, and climate groups in Southwest Florida, working together on a regional level to coordinate and share and this is where this honeycomb shape comes in. All of these things to enhance effective change, including sustainable, practical, pragmatic practices and actions to learn and educate, to influence decision makers and to foster conversation. But we also have learned that a lot of that is captured in these three areas and the top ones are really fundamental that we want to share our, what we call roots here. What are our values? What are we hold, what do we hold on to? And what, in, uh, what is our core, our core essence for each of the groups to share and critical about how to engage, how to connect and inspire and uh, literally um, augment each other. And then the last one is grow. And in our experience, this is one of the hardest parts uh, for our individual groups and now together, we have to find a way to continue to grow and expand. So how, the how, and I'm, this is sort of the architecture of how we're, how we're doing it. Again, we're gathering, we're not an official entity. We're not trying to be a 501c3, at least at this point, we just want to be this group of groups and all of us are volunteers. And that said, um, how can we partner? We know we need to, to engage diverse groups, some that we don't, we don't necessarily immediately have contact with. We need to build strategic influence and create bridges. We know, and again, we're not naive. Um, a lot of us have been educators. A lot of us have been leaders in different ways. We know we have to have critical capacities in leadership, in management, technically, um, and, and how to adapt, but uh, we don't have we don't have all of that um, 
in a final form by any means at all. In fact, we continue to feel like we can evolve. Um, so we're not naive, like I said, and we're patient, but we know we need to amplify and we know and we're committed to looking at how we can evaluate success. Um, but, and again, fundamentally where we come from, including where our heart's visions are um, and how to inspire and learn and support. So we're, we, we have focused particularly to strengthen interpersonal relationships um, because we know how beneficial that will be. So having decided that we're starting with intentional relationships, <laughs> we, we also know we wanted to choose a name. So what we did, we took the 73 in, in uh, people who had participated with these, the, the, the wonderful um, connections that Tammy has described and sent out uh, information about what we're, the, the, the whole idea, um, but asking for what should be the, the name, how should we choose to call ourselves? And we got 16 suggested names back and we ultimately got 35 people uh, voting. And so, and we had a, had a definitive win with from all of the names. And so this is how we ended up being the Southwest Florida Eco Alliance. Again, we're not one thing, we're a cohort. And again, we have primary focuses, but it's together that we're going to collaborate. So what do we need to do that? A lot of tools. And again, the functions to build this community, to maximize all the things we said we wanted to do, you know, uh, including driving and accelerating change and uh, building resilience. We know we need some organized structure. We're gonna be pretty loose with this, but we do know we need some tools and we need to have some of it uh, so easy to do that volunteers will, will, um, will not be overtaxed. But the key is, um, engaging. We want to cultivate a strong sense of belonging among members. We believe that that will motivate and drive members. Um, and then again, the, the empowerment that that can bring both for individual and individual networking and then sharing. So going forward, we plan to do some of this in person and some of this with an app, like so many other things. Um, we need to share a common technology. And in case you didn't know, there are uh, more than 30 apps for uh, platform features. And we have chosen uh, for a number of reasons to start with a private Facebook group. Um, we have a public one also. Um, and again, that's a, a great place for any of our members to post events and, uh, along with just their own site. Um, and when we, and the private part of this is not meant to be as an exclusion, but it's meant to be a place uh, where people can really let their hair down and not have to um, be um, be in the in the, in the the public arena, be able to to get down with closer relationships um, and ask for what we really need. So, having said that, you know what are the the platform features that we really need to share the values and the hope and the inspiration, all the things we say, but. Um, including fostering innovation. This is a list, it's not overwhelming, but each one has a different aspect. We'll have member profiles where people can post and comment and then comment on people's comment is what we're looking for. Basically have a way to talk privately about what's important to, to them and to share it with the others. We also know we need some sharing apps, uh, file apps that we want to, we have hopes for centralized um, file sharing with uh, reference base and easy location to find. Um, for example, you can pro promote meetings or activities and, and projects, meetings, not public meetings, but meetings where, for example, exactly how it started with, with, with CCL, they opened up their monthly normal meeting that was open to members of CCL, um, but they opened it up to the rest of us so that anybody who wanted to, to be in on this early discussion about collaboration was, was definitely invited. That's, the where, that's where we would be promoting those kind of meetings for each other. And then a re request for support, um, where you can ask for what you need, where you can ask for help if you're doing an event or you need some advice, some knowledge, some perspective, or just some, just some general feedback can be all kinds of, of, of ways we can ask for support from others, but also 
We want it to be um, a place where you can offer support. And we call it here request and offer. I think we're going to get turn it into give and get. Um, but one of the interesting things, if you if you can offer a service, some help, physical, intellectual, um, or uh, in a, any number of ways, there's almost nothing that more empowering to feel like a member of a team than being asked for your advice, especially if someone takes it. Um, we also want to share in a, sh a speakers bureau, uh, old, ideally someday a library, possibly newsletters, certainly a calendar so people know what's going on, and I and and sharing a calendar long enough in advance that it might influence where other people might um, choose to do events. Just sort of an, a, a heads up early kind of. We also are planning something called a showcase, um, where any group that or individual that joins will have the opportunity to have space on the on the site um, about their their what they are doing and also an in-person or hybrid or just a Zoom event, just 20 minutes of sh sharing what your actual programs are doing um, and then a 10 minute or so, you know, back and forth uh, question and answer um, along with probably more good food. <laughs> Um, so we'll see how that goes, but it's it's just to make it very personal. So then then it becomes um, a better chance to to learn about each other. We also think that having some of the tools we're going to use um, will help us uh, let other people know what we're doing and be able to amplify and help develop and, and encourage. And hopefully that will train and mobilize people. And then last but not least, like I said, we're committed to. Uh, some criteria for success, the measurement, evaluation, learning, that MEL, if you know that, that phrase, we want to figure out how to share our best practices, lessons learned when we've really bombed it, something all uh, to be able to, to share with each other what kind of impacts we're finding that are, that are effective. And that's why we're going for the, the private group on Facebook. The only things we're asking for members um, beside energy and enthusiasm and honesty is the membership questions to get into the, the private group. If you're familiar, this is a common thing, but we're only asking people to share their name and their best, their contact information and, and where, where they're, whether they're organizations and most, most people we find have more than one. Um, and then what are the interests specifically and in environmental sustainability, all uh, conserve, conservation or climate issues or concerns, and what are you most hoping to, to, to gain with this group? And the last, because we're all volunteers, we're always gonna be looking for additional leaders and, um, we, and, and direction. And like I said, this is constant evolution. We, are they willing to support and be part of, uh, of a steering team? And these are uh, group rules that I think any of you are, are probably used to. Actually, it's a fascinating experience to, to decide what you do want to say and hold up as your basically your 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 group ethics. Um, and these are these are um, we're we'll, we're very glad to share any of this information, of course. So we're an experiment in process. I have to say it's marvelous feeling to be able to feel like we're growing and that, that alone gives us, gives us energy to do more. And with that, I'm gonna hand this off to Jack to share what we believe is one of the most essential factors for, for our, our hoped for broad success. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. Um, good morning, everyone. So far, uh, you have heard about how the idea of the Southwest Florida Eco Alliance came about, uh, the conceptualization of that idea uh, through conversation among tentatively interested organizations and the steps taken to create the basic architecture of the Eco Alliance. Uh, the initial fa Facebook platforms of the Eco Alliance now exist and are ready for further development. Uh, my purpose is to say a few words about the uh, goals and aspirations of the Eco Alliance. Uh, my name is Jack Ebinger. I'm a retired environmental lawyer and conflict resolution educator. Uh, my law practice was largely focused on representing the interests of the regulated sector. Uh, and my post-retirement capstone endeavor was working with a Pennsylvania statewide environmental policy advocacy nonprofit organization intent on 
not just identifying environmental problems, but solving them as well through effective uh, in, uh, environmental policy change. Overlapping those two iterations of my career, I spent more than 25 years developing and teaching a graduate level course entitled Environmental Conflict Resolution and Problem Solving to graduate environmental science and management students at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. In addition to my role with the uh, Collier Lee chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby, I am a member of the moderator roster of Braver Angels, a purposely cross-partisan organization focused on improving civic discourse among folks with differing points of view. In case you are not familiar with Braver Angels, it was founded in 2017 as Better Angels. Its name was inspired by Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address in March 1861, when he implored the factions existing in the country at the time to not be enemies, but rather to be touched by the better angels of our nature. The organization name was changed to Braver Angels a year or so later to avoid an intellectual property dispute uh, with another nonprofit of the same name. Uh, Braver Angels' mission is to, and I quote, bring Americans together to bridge the partisan divide and strengthen our democratic republic. It seeks to accomplish that mission by offering skills courses, both virtually and in person, to enable folks to state their views freely and fully without fear, and to treat people who disagree with them with honesty, dignity, and respect. In then offers opportunities to practice learned skills through workshops and debate programs, again, both online and in person. All Braver Angels programs are structured so that roughly equal numbers of participants represent different points of view. The purpose of the training is to help people become more comfortable in welcoming opportunities to engage with those with whom they disagree. As Hillary and Tammy have explained, the Southwest Florida Eco Alliance is conceived to operate as a cohort that will enable members to maintain their respective identities and missions while at the same time establishing a forum to better coordinate with one another, engage in more effective information exchange, share resources, and foster constructive conversations with each other as well as the public. The hoped for goal is to better enable Eco Alliance members to educate public, the public as well as decision makers for the purpose of leading to the conception and implementation of pragmatic, sustainable practices to address environmental, conservation, sustainability, and climate change goals in Southwest Florida and perhaps beyond. The evolution of the Eco Alliance thus far has been organic. Although the potential sphere of its interest is broader than the Citizens Climate Lobby, our chapter saw an opportunity to offer a forum and some volunteers to help convene parties interested in organizing the endeavor. Uh, the Eco Alliance is now ready to uh, impanel a steering committee and to be set on its own course. So what are the current prospects in the future for the Eco Alliance? Um, I am firmly convinced that the Eagle Alliance can meet its goals of achieving better coordination among its members, enabling more effective information exchange, and providing for sharing of resources. And if that is accomplished, that will be progress. The more challenging question for the Eco Alliance, as is the case with any movement seeking to affect public policy change in our polar polarized society, is how its members will engage with each other and the public at large on matters where there are substantial differences in points of view among the parties. My professional experience tells me that public policy change cannot occur without constructive engagement among parties who, at least at the outset, disagree with one another. It goes without saying that over the past 20 or 30 years, that those having different perspectives from one another ever more frequently have decamped to the comfort of their own respective groups of like-minded thinkers. But I firmly believe that reaching out to parties who do not necessarily agree with you is both possible and necessary to accomplish meaningful policy change. Uh, from my past, I joined the Pennsylvania Environmental Council upon retiring from my legal practice precisely 
because its method of formulating environmental policy included soliciting input from parties representing as many different and often conflicting points of view as could be identified. The Environmental Council was often criticized for this approach by its peers. We were often asked, why would environmental an environmental advocacy group reach out to the industrial sector or to the regulatory sector, for that matter? Um, our answer was always that our intent was to identify the problem from all perspectives before we crafted a solution. Uh, in my judgment, the Environmental Council was the most effective environmental policy change organization in Pennsylvania. How the Southwest Florida Echo Alliance will evolve and what it will become remains to be seen. But in my mind, the biggest challenge is how it does it catalyze constructive conversations among the cohort of member organizations as well as the public, even when those conversations are among parties with different points of view. So with that, uh, I'd like to turn the program back to Hillary uh, for a summation. Thank you, Jack. So in, in summary, we know we need to recharge our batteries through networking and engaging. We need to find a sense of hope together, even in challenging times, that we must be a balance of effort and benefit. Members need to contribute uh, meanfully, meaningfully, not meanfully, meaningfully, <laughs> and find benefit. We need the right tools and the right attitude. We need to remember always we're not one thing, we're a cohort. And together we can collaborate like a beautiful Venn diagram as, Tom, as, as Tammy has uh, described us. And we need to create a place where all voices can be and feel heard, and we need to continue to evolve. Uh, we believe we're on a good path and we're, we're, uh, we're looking forward to the future, but the future needs to be real. And Arkan Lashwala, if you don't know him, I recommend his many writings. His quote, good ideas and passion must move to action. We cannot afford wasting time. We need to be precise. With all of the work that we need to do, the Southwest Florida Alliance is focusing specifically on the relationships because we know our emphasis needs to be relationships because they are at the heart of social change. Thank you for your time here. We're gonna be available apparently electronically, email, so forth, um, if you have any follow-up questions um, and thank you for your interest. Thank you, Tammy and Jack as well.